Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sapniewski. Thank you so much for popping back my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing two things. One, reviewing this gorgeous microphone, the Rode Pod Mic, and answering a question from one of my subs. Is it possible to run audio out of an XLR microphone directly into camera? This way you don't have to sync it up in post. One of the reasons that I really wanted to review the Rode Pod Mic is because I wanted to hear a female perspective on this microphone. I've watched countless videos with male voices, but I didn't see any with female voices. I saw some female unboxings, but I didn't hear any vocal samples with the Rode Pod mic. So I, I needed a new dynamic microphone for my live streaming. So I thought, let me just go ahead and get it and I'll do a review on it. And long at last, there will be a female review of the Rode Pod mic. Now, this is a broadcast dynamic microphone because when you have a dynamic microphone, it's just going to capture the noise in the what I call lobe of sensitivity, the area that's right in front of the microphone. Yes, it's possible if there are very loud noises around you, it can still capture that. But let me just show you how dramatically the noise or even a voice will drop out the minute that you step a little bit away from the microphone, even just from a few inches away. You can see how that volume already does a drastic fall off. So with dynamic microphones, you have to get right on top of them for them to work right. Now a condenser microphone, they capture your voice beautifully. They capture, you know, all the little granular nuances of your voice and can really make your voice sound very beautiful. But the problem is it's going to pick up every other noise too. So if you are in a room that's not sound treated or in a room that has a lot of ambient noise, a dynamic microphone is going to be the better bet for you. You know, this has got to be the sexiest budget microphone that there is. Just hands down. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's $125 right now. A few months ago, it was $99, but because of demand, the price has gone up. Now, when you buy this microphone, that's all you're going to get is the microphone. So even though it's a budget microphone at $125, you are going to need to spend more money to actually do this setup. You're going to need the XLR cable itself. You're going to need some kind of microphone stand. And I definitely recommend getting a pop filter for this microphone because even though there's a built-in windscreen, it doesn't really do a great job with blocking out plosives. So let me do a plosive test. Oh, and I'm going to steal this one from, what, what's that guy's channel? Audio, nerds, uh, to the audio, audio hotline. hotline. If you guys don't know the audio hotline, go check him out. He's so funny. He does really great reviews. He's got a great sense of humor and he's a cat person. So you got to appreciate that. But to do his plosive tests, he says, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peanutses. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peanutses. You see, peanutses is the plural of peanuts ownership. Peanutses. Listen, the plosives were just killing me. And if they were killing me, I'm sure they were killing you. So for the remainder of this video, I'm just going to have to have this cheap little pop filter in front of my face until I can get the sexy little matching pop filter to go along with this microphone. Okay, so as is typical of a dynamic microphone, you do not have to have the 48 volts of phantom power turned on your audio mixer, but my gain knob is set at about 80% with this microphone. So it is a very, very gain hungry microphone. They recommend that you purchase a cloud lifter to go along with this microphone. And what the cloud lifter is going to do is deliver some free clean gain to your microphone. So let's say I had the microphone plugged into the cloud lifter that was then plugged into my audio mixer. I would then have to engage the 48 volts of phantom power, but I would be able to bring that gain knob down to about 30%. That is going to strengthen the signal of your microphone as well as drop that noise floor. So it's going to significantly improve the sound of the microphone. So now your budget microphone is less like a budget microphone and more priced as a semi-pro package. But here's the thing. I've watched a lot of videos about this microphone, a lot of comparison videos, and this guy had this little microphone up against the Shure SM7B. The way he equalized them, the way that they were both plugged into a cloud lifter, he had them equalized so that the difference between the two was negligible. 
So you can get this guy to sound absolutely beautiful if you have all of those external components. I mean, right now, I, I don't have any of that stuff. And I think this microphone sounds really, really good. There's nothing engaged on my mixing board. Only the gain is pulled up. You know, no highs, no mids, no lows, nothing. Everything is at a tented position, meaning that there's nothing added and nothing subtracted to it. Every time I review a microphone, there's always a girl in the comment section that says, I really wish you would have sang into the microphone because then I would have gotten to hear what it sounds like with somebody singing. Here's the thing. This microphone was specifically made for podcasters, for the spoken word. It's, it's not meant to have someone sing into it. It's not meant for someone to strum a guitar into it. That's not what this microphone is at all. So I'm not, even though I said I would sing into the future microphones, not this time. I don't want to sing into it. And then, you know, because my voice is so wonderful that you think that your voice is going to sound as wonderful as mine and buy this microphone and you're going to be disappointed. I don't, I, I just don't want to do that. Clearly a joke. <laughs> I'm here all pandemic. Now, a couple of things that I want to get to about this microphone before I answer the subscriber's question. You might be hearing sibilance with this microphone. It's not the microphone. That sibilance is very specific to my voice, to my mouth. And that's because one of my bottom teeth has a chip in it. So whenever I pronounce some S's... They can be very harsh and hissy, and it's annoying. I know. I apologize. So many times I've gotten that chip fixed, and it just keeps popping out. So there's really nothing I can do. I just, I have to deal with the sibilance, and then unfortunately, you have to deal with the sibilance. But let's go ahead and do a sample of the proximity effect. And of course, the proximity effect is when you're directly on top of your microphone, getting very close to it, and that is going to enhance the bassiness of your voice, known as eating the microphone. And finally, let's get to the subscriber's question about, can you run audio out of your XLR microphone and get it directly into your camera? So of course, you're not gonna plug the XLR microphone directly into your camera, unless your camera has an XLR port, and I'm working with a Canon M50, so for me, that would be a hard no. But what I did do was take the audio out of my mixer and run it directly into camera. So I do not have to sync it into post. It is getting directly into camera. And the only thing that I did was take the audio out of the mixer through a very specific set of wires and run it directly into my camera. You just wanna make sure that your audio mixer has a control room out port. Now the control room out is gonna take two plugs, one red, one black, these are quarter inch plugs, and this is going to terminate into a 3.5 pin, which is then going to plug into your camera. Here's a tip, make sure your cable is going to be long enough to get from your audio mixer to your camera, so look for a cable that has like six to nine feet, and I'm gonna leave some links down in the description. Now, do I think that this is the best way to do your audio with this style of microphone? I don't think so. I think if you wanna get the cleanest possible audio that you can with an XLR microphone, your best bet is to record externally. I know. It's a drag. It's yet another step that you have to do, syncing your audio in post. And you're always looking to trim. You want to make that workflow as simplistic as possible. But listen, if you want the best audio that you can possibly get, I don't think that running it into camera with this kind of audio is the way to do it. I normally record externally whenever I do microphone reviews this way. I'm not having to run the microphone through the camera's preamp. Because the preamp in any camera is not going to be wonderful, especially in Canon cameras and especially in Panasonic cameras. I've never worked with a Sony camera, so I really don't have firsthand knowledge. I can't speak to a Sony camera. But the preamps and the Canon are not great, and the preamps in Panasonics are terrible. Here are my final thoughts on this microphone. I absolutely love it. I love it so much. It's gorgeous. It's sexy. It has that look that I want and it sounds really great. I definitely am going to pick up that Rode pop filter. I'm definitely going to pick up a cloud lifter. 
maybe not exactly a cloud lifter, but something that's like a cloud lifter, maybe not that pricey. If I find anything that I think is good or that something that one of my friends uh, might recommend that's a little more budget friendly, I'll go ahead and leave that in the links as well. But in case you're curious, let's go ahead and throw a little bit of equalization onto this microphone. Now, of course, whenever you're equalizing with the mixer, the first thing that you want to do is subtract. So you're gonna have to pull everything down to zero and then you start to add things in. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna begin subtracting. So we're subtracting the highs, we're subtracting the mids and we are subtracting the lows. Let's go ahead and begin to add in some of the highs and let's go ahead and begin to add in the mids. Now I find the mids you know, something about, we're adding in the lows as well, something about the mids, they seem to really muddy my voice. So what I like to do is, you know, make sure that those are relatively pulled down. Now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of compression and we can see how dramatically and drastically this is changing the sound of the microphone. This is by no means a professional equalization. I am not an audiophile, okay? I'm just fooling around with the knobs here, trying to see what sounds good to me. And to my ear, I mean, I of course, I wish my voice wasn't so sibilant, but I think that this is a marked improvement from the raw sound. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this female perspective of the Rode Pod Mic. I 100% recommend this microphone to anyone that's looking to pick something up for the spoken word. If you're podcasting or if you're a gamer or just a creator, ASMR, a, a twitcher, is that what they call the people on Twitch? Twitchers? Anything like that for the spoken word, this is a great little kit. I recommend picking up that cloud lifter, all of the accessories with it. In that price range, you'd be hard pressed to find anything better. Now, I would like to drop a little bit of a PSA here before I sign off. It's Memorial Day weekend of 2020, which means we are in the throes of the pandemic. And I just want to say to all my countrymen, bless all of you. God bless you. I hope that you are safe this Memorial Day weekend. We got this, you guys. You guys, we got this. We, if there's one thing I know about my fellow citizens is that we're all in this together. And we are going to come through the other side of this even stronger than before. To everyone working out there on the front lines, the nurses, the doctors, to the person that's stocking groceries in the grocery market while everyone else has been sitting their butts at home and you've been working, you're a frontline worker. Thank you. You deserve respect. You deserve a hazard pay. Everything. Thank you. Now listen, everybody else, we, we have to do our part too. These people have been out there working. We need to continue to keep them safe by doing what we can. We got to do our part to help keep them safe. And that means wearing a mask and doing, washing our hands and socially distancing. They said today wearing a mask cuts down the transmittability by 75%. That's a huge amount. 75% is a huge amount. So let's all do that together. While they're on the front line, Let's do our part too. Do what we have to do to protect one another because my mask protects you and your mask protects me. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. Please be safe, everybody. And until next time, wear your sunblock and wear your mask. <laughs>